So now that we've concluded the Lophotrochozoa group of organisms, we're going to now shift gears and look at a different group of organisms. So now we're still focusing on things that came from an ancestral protist that have true tissues, that have bilateral symmetry, that develop their mouth first in terms of their opening. And now we're going to be looking at a new group of organisms known as Ecdysozoa. So let's spell this out as Ecdysozoa. Remember, zoa just means animal. So we're talking about animals that undergo something known as ecdysis. And this is going to be part one uh, of the Ecdysozoa group of organisms. Here, we're first going to establish the fact that Ecdysozoa contain many, many, many species very, very successful group of organisms with tons and tons of species. Now, the common feature amongst all of these many species is the following, and we talked about it uh, in previous lecture, and we also just mentioned it right now. Their common feature amongst all of these is that they have to undergo ecdysis. So ecdysis. What is ecdysis? Ecdysis is a process that is going to uh, cause molting during growth. Molting during growth. And as this molting is occurring, the reason why it's happening, it's because the organism, as it's growing, will, and this is all ecdysozoans, will shed its external covering will shed its external covering. So that's a commonality amongst this huge, huge group of organisms that undergo ecdysis is the fact that they do that. They undergo ecdysis, thus the name ecdysozoa. So now let's put some examples, some phyla underneath this large group of organisms that are protostomia, bilateria, eumetozoa, and from an ancestral protist. The first phylum uh, that we'll do, and we'll do this one in this video and the next couple in the next video, um, is the phylum Nematoda. So a lot of people have heard of nematodes before, don't really understand what they are. Here we'll explain that Nematoda, this phylum, contains things that are like roundworms. That's what the common name of these Nematoda are. And roundworms are simply going to be those worms that are cylindrical, that's the name roundworms, cylindrical, but specifically with uh, tapered ends. So at the ends, it seems like somebody sort of squished them at the ends. They have these tapered ends. So cylindrical with tapered ends. Uh, in terms of their environment, they are all over the place. Okay, they are. They can be found in an aquatic environment. That just means straight up in water. They could be found in the soil, and they could also be found as parasites. So they also could be within a host. So we will say parasitic environment, otherwise known as a host. Another thing that they all possess is the fact that they have a cuticle. Cuticle. They all have a cuticle. A cuticle is simply an outer body covering. And one thing you'll notice about the places that they live in is that they're relatively damp. Water, of course, is water. There's lots of water all over the place. Soil is relatively damp most of the time, and within an organism, organisms mostly are composed of some sort of liquid uh, foundation, right? Uh, and so these damp areas are going to be important for this organism's survival. So let's say it's not in a damp area. It'll actually have a cuticle, which is going to be an outer body covering that's going to really prevent the drying out of this organism, just in case it is in a very dry, desolate environment. So that cuticle is very important for the nematoda. These nematoda are pseudo-coelomates. So they do not have that true coelom. They have that false coelom, thus the name pseudo-coelomates. And because of this, they actually don't have a circulatory system. We're going to see a circulatory system develop uh, as we move forward, but for right now, these guys have no circulatory system of their own. They do have an alimentary canal, so they do have a nice, well-developed di digestive system. And in addition, uh, a classic example of this uh, often infects dogs in a parasitic way is heartworm. Heartworm is a nematode that uh, is going to oftentimes affect house dogs, and it's a big problem uh, amongst them. And why is the heartworm a big problem? Because it's a parasite. It infects the host and utilizes the host resources. So that's our first phylum of ecdysozoa. Just remember that of all these things, just remember that all of these things include the fact that they, the nematoda undergo molting during growth and shed it, their external covering. And that's our first view of ecdysozoa. We'll continue ecdysozoa in the next video.